Okay, in this section, I'm going to talk a little bit about some basic rules for differentiation so you don't have to use that draconian uh, definition of the derivative. Okay, but please understand that these rules all came from that definition of the derivative. It's just that they've been developed for you so that you don't have to go through this. The first rule I want to talk about here is the constant rule. The constant rule basically says if you take the derivative of any constant uh, function or constant, you're going to get zero. Well, this makes sense graphically because if you remember, a constant uh, function has a horizontal, is a horizontal line, and of course the slope of a horizontal line is always zero. So if you were given the function f of x equal 5, and remember, this prime notation is the derivative notation. So the derivative of that would actually be zero. Now, it doesn't matter what the constant is. If it's a constant, the derivative is actually zero. So if I give you pi, that derivative is zero. What you might be interested in is one time I gave students um, something like this, pi squared and they tried to use uh, the power rule, which we'll talk about in a minute on this, but it doesn't matter. Pi squared is a constant, so the derivative, and this is another way I can show derivative. If it's in the form of y, I can write just y prime. So the derivative would be zero. So any constant, uh, the derivative of a constant is always zero. Now, the power rule basically says that if we want to, if we want to take the derivative of say x to a power then then that's going to equal the power times x and then raise to the power one less than what it started so in other words x to the n is n times x to the n minus one power this is actually called the simple power rule there's actually a more general power rule later for when we have functions raised to a power but for now, we just want to consider what happens when we have the independent variable raised to a power. So a simple one would be if we had f of x equals x to the seventh, and you wanted to find the derivative of that, well, the derivative of x to the seventh, you would bring the power down 7, and then you reduce the power by 1. So 7 minus 1 is 6. And so the derivative would be 7x to the sixth kind of a pretty powerful rule there when you say even if you you know forgive the pun there okay now one of the things that we have to do when we're working with the power rule we've got to be able to work with exponents and radicals so if you see a radical you need to be able to write it as a power so you can apply the power rule when finding the derivative so let's see if I have the fifth root of x squared I have to first rewrite this, so you have to rewrite it as x to the 2 fifth power, and then you can apply the power rule. So the derivative of x to the 2 fifths, I bring the 2 fifths down, and then I raise it to the 2 fifths minus 1 power. Well, 2 fifths minus 1 is actually minus 3 fifths, so, so the answer is 2 fifths times x to the negative 3 fifths power, but we don't leave our powers as negatives. So if you have x to the negative 3 fifths, we're going to put it in the denominator and change the power to positive 3 fifths. So that's actually 2 over 5x to the 3 fifths. Okay, here's another one we have to rewrite. This is 1 over the cube root of x squared. Well, first of all, let's write the radical as a power. That's the same as x to the 2 thirds power. The problem, though, is that's in the denominator. So we have to write this with, you have to figure out a way to write this as a power. Well, 1 over x to the n, it can be written as x to the negative n. So 1 over x to the 2 thirds can be written as x to the negative 2 thirds. Now, I haven't even started using calculus yet. All I did was some algebra to rewrite this. So now I can use calculus and find the derivative. The derivative of this, using the power rule, 
would be I'd bring the negative two-thirds down, so I'd have negative two-thirds as my coefficient, and then x to the power of negative two-thirds minus one. Well, negative two-thirds minus one is negative five-thirds. So I'd have negative two-thirds x to the negative five-thirds. And again, we don't leave negative exponents in the answer, so I have to move this x to the negative five-thirds to the denominator so I can write it as x to the positive five-thirds. So that the derivative would be minus 2 over 3x to the positive 5 thirds. So make sure you do a lot of practice on that. Now one of the special cases of the power rule is that the derivative of x is 1. Well, that's because x is x to the first. Well, if you apply the power rule to that, you get 1 times x to the 0. Well, guess what that is? 1 times x to the 0 is just 1. So you don't have to remember a power rule for that. If you take the derivative of x with respect to x, you get 1. Okay, now the next rule says that if I have a constant times a function, if I want to take the derivative of some constant times a function, that's the same as the constant times the derivative of that function. Okay, now so if I want to take the derivative of constant times a function, it's constant times the derivative of the function. So if I want to take the derivative of 7x cubed, well, you, you can do this in your head, but let me explain to you how I got that. 7x cubed is actually 7 times the derivative of x cubed, and the derivative of x cubed using the power rule is 3x squared. So it's really 7 times 3x squared, which is 21x squared. Now, if you want to find the derivative of 5 times x to the 1 fourth, here I'm just showing you, and, and you don't have to show this, but I'm showing you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 5, and then here I'm just showing you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the derivative of x to the 1 fourth. So you could skip this step and just go ahead and do it. So 5 times the derivative of x to the 1 fourth well, the derivative of x to the 1 fourth is 1 fourth x to the negative 3 fourths using the power rule. And then using some algebra to clean this up a little bit, that's the same as 5 over 4x to the 3 fourths. Now again, you can do these in your head. Um, if you had to find the derivative of 5 over x to the 7th, now the first thing you got to do is rewrite that as an ex as a, so that it has an exponent. So that would be the same as 5 times x to the negative 7. Now I can do this in my head because I know the derivative of 5x to the negative 7 is actually what? 5 times negative 7x to the negative 8. So what's 5 times negative 7? Negative 35. So it's negative 35x to the negative 8, which is 35 over, or actually negative 35 over x to the 8. There's the negative there. There's also a sum or difference rule. So if you want to find the derivative of a sum, then you just take the derivative of each function and add them together. Or if it's a difference, you take the derivative of each function and subtract them. So for instance here, here I just went ahead and showed you this, this involves sums and differences here. So basically what we're saying is this is that if I want to take the derivative of 5x to the 4th minus 3x squared plus 7x minus 1, I can just take the derivative of each term. So the derivative of this would be the derivative of the first term uh, minus the derivative of the second term plus the derivative of the third term minus the derivative of the fourth term. So the derivative of 5x to the 4th would be the 5 times 4x cubed, which is 20x cubed then minus the derivative of 3x squared would be 3 times 2x, which is 6x, so I'd have minus 6x. The derivative of 7x would be 7 times the derivative of x. Well, the derivative of x is 1, so 7 times 1 is 7. And then, of course, 1 here is a constant, and the derivative of 1 is 0, so I don't have anything else to add. So that's the derivative of that function. Now, this next one I have to rewrite it. This next one says square root of x plus 4x to the fifth. Well, notice I rewrote the square root as a power. So that's x to the one-half. 
And now I'm going to take the derivative. Well, to take the derivative of this, and, and again, you don't have to write this, but this is just showing you that to take the derivative of the sum of these two terms, I take the derivative of the first term plus the derivative of the second term. So, how do I take the derivative of x to the one-half? It's one-half x to the negative one-half. How do I take the derivative of 4x to the fifth? Well, it's 4 times 5x to the fourth, which is 20x to the fourth. So if I rewrite this without the negative exponent, and then multiply 4 and 5 together for the second term, I get that the derivative of this function is 1 over 2x to the 1 half plus 20x to the fourth. Um, here's another one. Again, I had to rewrite the first term. So I have 5 over x to the 2 thirds minus 3x squared plus 5. Well, the first term can be rewritten as 5x to the negative 2 thirds. So I can actually take the derivative of this term and then minus the derivative of the second term and then plus the derivative of the third term. Now the derivative of 5 times x to the negative 2 thirds well, that's going to be negative 10 thirds x to the negative 5 thirds. But notice I did this in my head. I, know, I have the negative 10 thirds. See, negative 10 over 3. Notice what I did with x to the negative 5 thirds. I went ahead and moved it to the bottom and made it x to the positive 5 thirds. The second term is pretty easy. The derivative of 3x squared is just 3 times 2x, which is 6x. And, of course, we have a minus, so it's minus 6x. And then the derivative of 5 is 0, so there's nothing to add for the last part. So that's how you find derivatives. Go ahead and do those two practice problems. And let me show you a couple of applications. Let's, the derivative of a function is simply the slope of the graph. So if I said find the slope of this graph at, say, x equal 1 and 3, you basically would just get the derivative of this. And I'll leave you to do that for practice. But the derivative of this would be 4x minus 3. Now, if I want the slope of the graph at x equal 1, plug 1 into the derivative. Don't plug it into the function. Plug it into the derivative. And you get 4 times 1 minus 3 is 1. So at x equal 1, the function has a slope of 1. Now, if I want the slope at 3, plug 3 into the derivative. 4 times 3 is 12 minus 3 is 9. So at x equal 3, this function has a slope of 9. Okay, here's another one. Find the slope of this function at x equal 4. Well, you, you do the derivative on your own. And this is what you're going to get. And now plug 4 into it to get the derivative of x equal 4. So the derivative at 4 would be 1 over square root of 4, which is a half, minus 1, which is negative 1 half. So at x equal 4, we have a slope of negative 1 half. Now, one other thing you might be asked is to find the equation of the tangent line. So here, let's say we want to find the equation of the tangent line for this function at x equal 1. Well, to get the equation, you actually need the point. So we're going to need both the x and the y value. Now, to get the y value, you plug that 1 back into this function to get the y value. So if I plug 1 back into here, I get 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So now I know the point. See, I only knew the x value, but now I know the whole point. And we know the slope is 1. How did I know that? Well, didn't I find the slope up here as 1? So I know the slope at x equal 1 is 1 for that function. So now I know the slope, I know the point, and I can use the point-slope formula. y minus y1, so that would be y minus negative 1 is y plus 1, equals the slope times x minus 1 and then just use some algebra to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. So you get y equals x minus 2. And what you could do, if you wanted to, is you could graph this function and graph this line on the same graph, and you would see that this line is tangent to this function at the point 1, negative 1. Okay, here's another one. You can freeze the video and work it, but it's the same thing that I had there. I give you a function and I tell you to find the equation of the tangent line for this function at x equal 4. You've got to find the y value, which is 0, and now you know the slope from up there from the previous problem we did. You know the slope is negative 1 half. So using the point slope, you can get the equation of that tangent line. Okay?
So that pretty much covers basic definitions of derivatives, and now next we'll do some more complicated ones.